Hello, I'm Liana. I am a recent high school graduate that is going to VCU Arts in the fall. So I wanted to share my portfolio and tips on how I got into art school because I never took an art class in high school and I decided that I wanted to split this up into two videos. So you're watching part one. Part two will come out next week or if you're watching this in the far future, it's already out. Yeah, I thought that maybe my portfolio might help someone out there that is applying to VCU Arts or any art school. I watched a ton of the videos that people made on their portfolios that went to VCU Arts and I thought that I could include mine. So I wanted to first talk about stuff specific to VCU Arts. They don't have any requirements for any specific drawing or medium that you have to use. I know that RISD always has that you have to draw something with a prompt of theirs, um, but VCU Arts does not have anything with that. They're very, very open to what you can give them. They really want to see what you can do. The only requirements for them was that it has to be 12 to 16 pieces in your portfolio. So mine had 13, but I actually only had 12 actual pieces because one of my pieces, the first one that I'll be talking about, is the same piece but different photos of it. And you will see why in a little bit. Let's get started. If you're wondering why I am sitting like this, it's because I'm gonna put the pieces up here. They always say that you should put your strongest pieces at the beginning and at the end. I don't really know if that's true, but I kind of did that. I think that I definitely put my weaker pieces in the middle. And so my first piece is the oldest piece that is in my portfolio. It is from 11th grade English class. Every year we had to choose a book to read in the quarter and then do a project about it at the end of the year. So the book I chose was Homegoing by Yagasai. I really love that book. And I made this sculpture, this, um, I, don't, I still don't really know what to call it, um, <laughs> that represents each of the characters. There are 14 main characters and each of them have a symbol that I found in the book that I thought represented them, and I made all of the symbols. I took advantage of the description part of my portfolio, and I would write about my process of why I made the art. I did not write what it was about. I didn't need to do that. They can see the photo of my piece. I thought that this was a very strong start to my portfolio. As you can see that I know how to use a lot of different mediums and I'm open to doing a lot of non-conforming things, I guess. So the second piece in my portfolio, like I said, was actually just close-ups of the parts of my homegoing um, sculpture that took me the longest to make that I thought were the most interesting to get a closer look at. It's very hard to look at the little details when you see a giant photo of my piece, so I decided that it was beneficial for my portfolio to include a close-up of the ones that I think are the most interesting. I didn't go into much detail when I wrote the description about it, but I talked about the different materials that I used to create them. I will go into this later in the second video. I think it's super beneficial to include multiple angles or close-ups of your piece if you spent a lot of time on your pieces. Don't do it for all of them, <laughs> but I think since I had leftover space to include it in my portfolio that it was a smart move on my part. The next piece is also a English project that I did. It was for the book Salvage the Bones 
I decided that these two were my strongest pieces um, that I did for 11th grade and I really wanted to include them. Should also read that book. <laughs> this one had less boxes, as you can see. So I could include the close-ups of each individual box with the photo. I just made it into a collage and I think that it was beneficial for the admissions office to see the close-ups of my work, especially for these pieces that have a lot of detail and have a lot of moving parts to them. My next piece goes similarly to the other two. As you can tell, I grouped together the pieces that have similar mediums, and this one is my artistic representation of the five stages of grief. You can see that each box represents each stage, so the first one is denial, and then anger, and so on, and they also have a color attached to them, and also a medium and a texture. I really wanted to create a distinct difference between all of the stages of grief. I think that they're all very heavy emotions that needed to be separated in a physical way with my piece. And this one's just very abstract. It was very experimental. I wasn't sure if it was actually going to be good, but I included it because I think it turned out really cool. My next piece is only three mediums. It is wire, it is wood, and it is yarn. This one is very self-explanatory as well. Uh, the only thing I, maybe I'll say about it is that it was originally going to be a painting and then I realized that it would be much more impactful if it was 3D. So I decided to make the hands out of wood instead of painting them and attach, physically attach a piece of red yarn so you could see the attachment to the ring finger. Not to brag, but three of these pieces ended up in my high school's literary art magazine. This is one of them, and the next one I will show you is another one. So this one is also made out of the same materials that the previous one was made out of. This one I will go more into depth of what it is so you can understand it. As you can see, the metal wire houses and the embroidery floss, the colored, em the colored embroidery floss are opposing sizes. So if the house is small, the, the, the embroidery floss will be big. If the house is big, the embroidery floss will be small. That was done on purpose. My representation of this I didn't actually include in the description of my portfolio. I didn't think it was necessary. I felt as though it was more significant if I didn't include what I interpreted it as and I left the admissions office to interpret it however they wanted to. Hold on, my cat is scratching. Oh, oh. Do you want to say hi, Wally? You want to say hi? The next piece I did is not 3D. All of the previous ones were 3D. Um, I did that on purpose as I said earlier. I clumped them together. This one is just a plain sketch of anatomy and I wanted to show that I can use other mediums even though 3D is my main medium. I think it's important to show that you can do other things than your one medium. It's not necessary, it's not required, they just heavily imply in their wording choice, um, in their in their description for what they're looking for, that they would like to see 2D and 3D, which is, 2D is 
my challenge. The next one is also a sketch. As you can see, I just sketched my water bottle. I took it upon myself in December to sketch something every single day. I don't draw. And so I thought maybe, maybe I will try drawing just to see if I came up with something that I really thought I wanted to include in my portfolio. I think it's important to experiment when you're making a portfolio and if you come across something that you think you did really well then you should include it. The next one is an oil painting and I didn't include any other oil oh, I did not include any other oil paintings besides this one but it is a bunch of objects in my room. I took a photo of it and I I uh, painted it. It is a bunch of objects that I found around my room that I thought were very interesting together and gave me a little bit of a challenge to paint things that weren't flat. And I actually really liked how this ended up. So I decided, so I decided to include it. For that one, there's not much to say except for I wanted to try a different medium uh, to include in my portfolio and I enjoy working with oil so I thought that I should experiment. We transition from sketching and painting to photography. So I actually took my best friend's I ended up taking my best friend's senior portraits because of circumstances and I think they turned out really well. I took them just on my dad's phone, he's an XR, and I experimented with angles, with lighting, with different outfits, with so much stuff. We just walked around my neighborhood and I took a photo that I thought was definitely portfolio worthy. And I actually asked my friends that are big into photography uh, what the best photo to include was. I took so many others, maybe I'll put some up here of the ones I was choosing from. And I ended up going with this one, even though it maybe wasn't the first photo I would have chosen. I look back at it and I, I realize that it was definitely the right choice. I am someone who likes to take photos as a hobby. I would not call myself a photographer. I was never serious about that. I never took a class in high school, but I thought it would be really cool to include a digital medium in my portfolio. After that is a mix between a photo and graphic design? Digital? Medium? I got a button machine for Christmas and I decided to recreate vintage queer pins from the 1900s that I thought were really cool and I had one of my friends model for me. I just took photos of him and I thought that this would be something so cool to put in my portfolio and I wanted to show that I can do a little bit of graphic design. And after that, I have photos of buttons that I made. I have the actual buttons on one side and I have the screenshot of what they look like on a laptop on the other. And I wanted to show that I can make my own designs. I made these all myself. I had to decide on the fonts to use, on the symbols of the gods and goddesses. I'm big into Greek mythology. I'm a Latin kid. I thought that it would be something really interesting to see in button form. So I made buttons of the Greek deities. Here's my kitty. His name is Wally. After that is an acrylic. And again, I do not paint. I thought that this was the best medium to use for what I wanted to portray 
It is a painting of my two grandmothers after a poem that I included in the description of my piece in the portfolio. The poem is about how each of my grandmothers represents the celestial bodies. So one of them is the sun and the other is the moon. As you can see in the painting, above them is the one that I think they represent. And it's also really special because my grandmas both paint, and one of them paints with acrylic. And I thought, whatever, I'll like give it a try. And it's definitely not my strongest painting, but it means a lot to me. And I thought that it would be important to include it. And my last piece is this little guy over here. It is made out of polymer clay and a piece of wood, and it is the process of making dumplings. This ties into my grandma's because both of my grandma's make dumplings with me, and it is a very important part of Asian culture to make dumplings and have that family time. And so I thought that it would be really important for me to include that in this portfolio. My favorite medium to use is polymer clay. And so I made a little polymer clay scene of the process of making dumplings. I wanted to end my portfolio on this really important piece of my culture. I thought that it was a good way to wrap up my portfolio. Yeah, I'm really happy with it still. I am really pleased with how my portfolio turned out. As I'm reading this out loud or thinking about this, there were actually 14 photos, thir 13 pieces, but 14 photos, um, not 12 pieces and 13 photos. Sorry, I completely forgot about that. I hope that you enjoy this video. I will include my portfolio at the end if you just want to look at uh, my pieces. Have a wonderful day, evening, afternoon, whatever, and subscribe if you want to see more and more of this guy.